The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. Exciting day here at TFNN with your host, Cuddly, Squeezably Soft. Once more, we go into the breach, dear friends. And of course, we meet every day that the market's open with a power trading hour at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what else are we doing? We are eh, kind of treading water, but uh, not uncommon to be had at these times, and that is uh, expiration day. A lot of times you either get uh, the big movement before, a couple days before, or a couple days after. At the moment, uh, what we're doing is uh, down five points on the S&P cash, 2.23 billion shares. And uh, then what are we going to have? Options roll over on Monday and Tuesday. So we'll probably have a little bit more volatility. Uh, we're going to get into earnings just a little bit. And I think that will set the tone of where this market's going to go. We've got more things happening on the weekend. We'll get into that in the news. As always, when news breaks, I am here to fix it. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, that's about it. But uh, a quiet market, but not uh, unforeseen. Uh, as we said yesterday, m you know, maybe it could go up a little, maybe it could go down a little bit. I was not looking for anything. The options looked like they were fairly locked. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the uh, just a handful of ones that are not. Uh, I have a I told you thusly. And uh, eh, I think we'll have some fun today. We'll get ready to make some money next week. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And, ooh, well, thank you. And on this day, if I can find my uh, thing, uh, a lot of things happened. Where is it at? Come on, bring that up. There we go. I was hiding something. Of course, uh, to, to, where is it at here? Uh, on this day in 1912, early in the morning, uh, after striking an iceberg around midnight, the Titanic sinks to the bottom of the North Atlantic, making a cold calculation about the uninsured value of the vessel and counting 15 fatalities at zero, 1,500 fatalities at zero. The stock market crunches the numbers and takes $2.6 million off the total capitalization of Mercantile Marine Company, the owner of the doomed ocean liner. Uh, and uh, kind of a big day. I, my grandmother, one of her favorite stories was being eight years old and saying, uh, just knowing in 1912 in a tiny little hamlet about uh, 10 miles east of Springfield, Missouri, she talked uh, about many things growing up there. Um, apparently, uh, somebody uh, that uh, wasn't of the white persuasion uh, looked at her sister and they actually, she said, uh, you know, they actually did string him up. So uh, a little confirmation back then of what it was like in southern Missouri. She talked about them going after witches, even in 1912. But one of her favorite stories of all was uh, uh, the bells ringing all over town. And, of course, uh, I don't know how they could hear them 10 miles out, but maybe they had multiple bells. And they, when they started ringing in one spot, they rang in the other. And everybody went into town to read the only newspaper about the accounts of it. And uh, before telephones, before really cars took off, uh, the roads were only passable by horses. And it was uh, one of those things where uh, you really kind of understand how primitive we were even back in 1912. And, uh, of course, I... Another one of these crossroads, I actually worked on the movie Titanic and had a great time. Um, what they did was uh, build a barge and put a uh, one-tenth scale ship on it. And uh, they actually put some of the innards on that barge and could fill uh, different parts of the uh, barge to make the water rush in and around on the set. 
Uh, I actually worked on the Queen Mary. They'd taken out the boiler room and, of course, put a huge meeting room in the thing. And I was able to stay on that for, I don't know, seven days or ten days, I think, while I was there uh, working with some of my customers. Uh, but uh, they had literally a ton of animators all sitting in this giant banquet uh, uh, facility, uh, all working on it. And right next door was the uh, barge with the uh, sets and everything else. And uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting uh, to uh, see what it was like to come back two years later to see a uh, finalized version. Of course, I saw nothing about um, what was actually happening uh, that was filmed live. It's all about uh, the animators for me, but uh, fairly interesting. Of course, in 1954, uh, we also had a provision uh, signed into law that made April 15th the due date for individual tax returns. And, of course, for the stock market, the big deal today was in 1998, the New York Stock Exchange implemented circuit breaker uh, rules, mandating trading halts when the market drops at least 10%. And, boy, did that come uh, in very handy come that October and November of that year as we started to see uh, a company almost blow up the entire uh, markets of the entire world. That was long-term capital management. They had made huge bets on uh, Russian bonds, and uh, they were to blow up in their face. And, of course, uh, one of the best books about uh, that segment is called When Genius Failed. Uh, just because they had a whole bunch of Nobel Prize winning uh, geeks, uh, they failed to figure out that uh, numbers do not always work when you become bigger than the market. Uh, at the time that they blew up in 1998, uh, most of what they had was at a leverage of more than 100 to 1. That is, if uh, something went down a buck, they lost 100. And if it went up a buck, they, of course, made 100. Uh, and, of course, that's all well and good until it doesn't go your way. But uh, well, that's it. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. No, I didn't see any ghosts on that ship. I know they, they uh, pushed that. Probably uh, the best thing that happened during that time, I think this was that time that I'm pretty sure this was it. Uh, we went in there, my, uh, the owner, or actually the owner uh, of the company, I was a sweat equity partner, the owner of the company came down and uh, we hung out in the Winston Churchill bar that's on the Queen Mary and had many basses. I really hadn't drank many bass beers before. It became a, a interesting deal. Uh, but uh, we went over and saw the Spruce Goose before they moved it. And at that time, uh, I was making good money, but uh, uh, the owner of the company before we went public was making god-awful amount of money. And we went over to see the Spruce Goose just as it was closing. And uh, he flipped uh, a guy about 200 bucks to let us go up in the tail of it. I walk up all the stairs and go through all the other stuff that most people are not uh, able to go see. And I'm glad they did because now they moved it somewhere. Uh, and I think in Oregon or uh, up by Redmond, Washington or something. Um, probably not going up there anytime soon. When we get back, we'll get to what's actually moving these markets. And uh, Brazil in flames... We'll talk about that this weekend because it is going to be a driving force when you come back and start looking at those futures Sunday night. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Day Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're back. Uh, as I said, uh, we're going to be looking into making money next week. It's going to... Uh, I don't see anything that says that before the end of the day, we're going to see much of a change. I'm kind of looking that we're probably maybe close a couple points up here from where we're at now, maybe 2080 or something on the S&P cash. Volume is light at uh, 2.3 billion shares on the New York consolidated tape. But, uh, well, you don't know, ever know. But anyway, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in South America, so you may want to look at that. Uh, of course, we've got two things happening uh, in the oil market. One will be Brazil, but on 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Sunday, there is a vote in their political thing. I don't know what it is, a, a Duma or a Congress or whatever. But on Sunday at 2 p.m., uh, there is a whole bunch of stuff. They're getting ready for riots and everything else. But apparently the President uh, Rousseff uh, who is uh, pretty knee-deep in the corruption there, is uh, probably going to get uh, impeached. And this is going to cause all kinds of problems. Of course, going into the Olympics couldn't happen at a better time. Uh, but, uh, of course, a big oil producer, and that may make a little bit of difference. Uh, and also look at the prices of a PBR. Uh, and uh, I don't know what else you could say about it other than that is part. We also have, of course, uh, problems in Argentina, and those are the hot spots. Over the weekend, of course, we're going to have a little get-together with some of the OPEC countries. And uh, today, uh, crude kind of nosedive a little bit when we found out the Iranians had, uh, you know, they were sending some lackey. They weren't sending anybody that could actually do anything. And uh, that pretty much, uh, when that news hit, pretty much turned crude down. Um, so that was pretty much it. Uh, now we're kind of just looking to see what happens over the weekend. But uh, I don't think anybody's thinking that anything that, uh, that uh, both uh, the uh, Saudis and uh, the Russians who are trying to get this thing done 
uh, is going v anywhere very fast. It is a mad, 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 eh, eh, maybe even miffed market today doing little or nothing. Uh, but, of course, today is monthly options expiration. Uh, we do have kind of a um, pattern that happens in April, and that is that the market stays up on light volume into May, and that starts the sell in May and go away, uh, which is, doesn't always happen. But uh, this is kind of setting up very much like the big dip we had. I'll have to think about it, but I think it was in 2011 where we went right into April and the thing tanked. Uh, I remember because I was short the gills on that, but it had made a second top uh, in that, uh, I think the, uh, was it like, uh, I think the first one was like April 1st and the second one was like uh, April 28th or something. And uh, that popped right back into it. We're going to go to phone calls right away, I think, as soon as someone types we need to send a little Jeopardy music while they're waiting. We have a very slow typist. He'll be here in just a second. Mike. Yes, Dave. How are you doing today? From Ormond Beach. Nowhere close to Lutz. We're close to Daytona. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so what can we do today? Okay, Dave, uh, my uncle and I are loyal TFNN listeners, and we both used to have the Timing the Trade Toolkit, mm -hmm. which used to display the tick index and, mm -hmm. the, you know, the trend index and the five-day arms. Mm -hmm. And my problem is I, I work a full-time job. I work for an aerospace company, and I work a lot of hours. And to keep up with the markets, I periodically, you know, check my phone. I was wondering, are there any sites out there that you or the people in the den or any other TFNN listeners know of that are free sites where I could get the tick and the trend index? I know Tommy. Yeah, I've, I've got some links. Why don't you just email me at path at tfnn.com? Will do. And I'll try to, uh, I'm going to be busy this weekend, but I'll try to get to it uh, by Sunday and I will we'll dig them up. I have them. I just don't probably have them at my fingertips at the moment. But okay. uh, if you email me uh, when I'm going through everything Sunday night, getting ready for Monday, I will dig them up and uh, and send them out to you. But, yeah, they're there. And okay. uh, go ahead. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a great help, because, like I said, you know, I, you know, I work and then, I, you know, I get breaks throughout the day where I can check the markets and check, you know, but uh, trying to have a summary of everything. That'd be great. You bet. Yep, there's right. a, there's there's several out there that actually do. I think the five day arms and the uh, trend and tick indexes, and oh, uh, yeah, no problem at all. Thank you. So Anything much, else? Um, I don't know if if you could, uh, you know, you know, brief us. Uh, I know Tom always looks for an uptick of uh, plus a thousand to confirm, you know, a, a kind of an intermediate top or bottom. And, uh, you know, I know he has his parameters on the five-day arms and, and the trend. You know, I don't know if you want to go over that with us. And uh, I didn't listen to the first part of the show. I don't want you to repeat yourself. But um, No, I, I, you know, I, I tend to look at those myself. But, I, um, you know, if you're t talking about very, uh, uh, very soon uh, moves in the market, uh, if you're trading interday, that kind of stuff, um, you probably tend to look at that a great deal more. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of scans, and I tend to wait until I see a whole bunch of stocks uh, that are at highs on lighter volume, at lows at lighter volume. And so my trades tend to be a little bit different in that I'm waiting for probably longer-term trends to develop instead of shorter-term trends. And okay. that taken, I've used it. And in fact, uh, one of the uh, guys that I traded with for a number of years, um, Tim Ord, actually came up with that. And if you uh, just uh, do Tim Ord and uh, Google that with, along with uh, Tick Trend Index, New York Stock Exchange, you'll probably find uh, the original articles that came out in like 1995 or something. And they talk okay. about Tick and Trend Indexes that are like, 
400 and 500, right? Because yeah. it all it all depends on how many stocks that the New York Stock Exchange actually has. So as right. the, you get more units on there, you know, I've seen it go from 500 to 1,000 to 1,500. Uh, right. I think there's a, right now there's about 2,700 of them. And you okay. just have to be aware that over time how those numbers will drift. So right. technically that's it. They tend to be uh, fairly decent uh, for, you know, if you're trading, you know, with a time span of maybe one or two or three days, um, mm -hmm. they can reverse themselves. But uh, if you're, you know, actively trading, um, I tend to be more of a swing trader. So right. that I need a little bit more than being in a stock for a day. Right. Uh, or two, but uh, that's yeah. a, uh, they work very well if you want to rip off a, a day or two or three uh, move in there, but they tend to be a little bit more shorter term. Uh, probably why I don't talk about it as much as uh, some of the other hosts on TFN. Thanks for the call. We're going to go right to Tim in Denver when we get back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We're going to go right to Tim from Denver. How are you doing today, Tim? Good. How are you doing, David? Thanks for uh, taking my call. You bet. So what do we want to talk about today? 
treat it. I usually try to archive you at the end of uh, you know later on in the evening. But um, what do you think of the biotechs guy like IBD? Well, you had a lot of shorting coming in on the six when this thing went up, and normally that's a fairly good indication that you're going to have to wait until those guys cover. Um, or what do you think in short? Yeah, I got a small position, and I was either going to you know, run about flat, either get rid of it, or just or my game plan was maybe if there's a pop on Monday, I don't know, I suppose it could pop a little higher, you know. To, no, normally, you know, what will, yeah, normally what will happen, uh, especially with the uh, uh, shorts, is that they'll all get short, right, at the high, and then it kind of wanders back up there, and then they, then they cover, and then they'll reshort. It normally what happens at the at the bottoms is everybody gets so pessimistic and they all dump on it, and that's the bottom. And when no one shorts at the top, that's normally a good sign that the top is in. And that's the probably the downside to this right now uh, on the short side is on the six you had some fairly decent short uh, shorts coming in this market. The market, uh, I mean the uh, IBB did go up on volume that day, but you also had a sh huge amount of shorting in this thing. My guess is that. Where you would want to tick this thing off is probably about 290. Is there's a gap that still exists going back to the 15th of January, right. where this thing started going sideways one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably about seven days of congestion ending on the 25th of January. And that shelf over here on the left hand side of the chart is kind of uh, telling me that. That is where resistance would be. So that's you. You're probably pretty good if you got it at 287 or something short. Uh, but at the same time, you always have to look at that 290 level, which is probably going to be the resistance level. Yeah, I got, I got a feeling it might pop a little bit too, and uh, it'll be interesting. And maybe you know the multiple market might pop on Monday, and that might be the you know. The well, you got that, uh, you got options rollover, and normally <laughs> what will happen if you're popping higher on Monday then look for the market to pull back on Tuesday. If you're pulling down on Monday, look for the market to pop on Tuesday for options rollover, because that has a lot more to do with option market makers getting ready for the next couple of months. Um, and they tend to kind of push the market around a little bit. Normally, by the time you get to Wednesday, uh, those guys are out of the market and are standing back to let, basically let the actual market uh, work like a market instead of pushing it around so they can get in and out of positions. They also have to, of course, unwind the positions they've had for the last, you know, either 30 or 45 or 60 days on the options that expire today. So that tends to be a little bit. Um, what I would look for is very uh, sh light shorting uh, going in to that 290 is kind of where I would say your first opportunity is. Um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that it did kind of test the February 9th low and lighter volume, but it still did not go through it and pierce it. And uh, that always opens that door at 240 to come back and get retested. Um, but right now, I would say maybe you're in a trading range between that 290 and 240 unless we break through those highs. And uh, it's hard for me to see until the election's over that we don't continue to hear more um, about the uh, them coming after these companies for their profits, politically anyway. Right, right. Hey, thanks a lot, David. You you have a great weekend. You too. And uh, we'll continue to look at it. But, uh, I, you know, it just looks like it's kind of out of gas up here, at least the IBB. But does that mean that uh, they can't run it one more time? You really kind of dislike all this very light volume after the spike uh, to 287.77 on the 7th of April. And that's it. You can be like the uh, two gentlemen uh, today and give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And uh, if you need any help or some pointers uh, like the first call or a question about uh, anything, or including uh, technology, this is a good day to ask it as uh, it is a a fairly quiet market. We're off three points on the S&P cash right now. 2.4 billion shares, so we will have a light volume day by the end, which is not uncommon uh, after a little, well, what am I going to call it, a 40-point bounce in the market uh, 
from Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday. Um, but uh, not uncommon. Um, there were only a couple of uh, opportunities that I saw that looked any good. Uh, I can't say that I capitalized on them because of the uh, general market action. I was going to be more, uh, very reticent uh, to go out on a limb this expiration. I didn't see a whole lot moving out here. I like it when I do see some movement. Uh, that is more likely than I'm going to see other movement. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got uh, probably the only big short squeeze I saw was in uh, uh, CMG, and we'll talk more about that in the middle. Um, we're going to go to Ed in Atlanta and bats. Oh, and app apparently the bats have gotten uh, Ed, so we will uh, see. The bats flew out. That's certainly what. I don't know if he was asking about that. Maybe he'll call bat. Of course, bats uh, did go public today. Uh, most everything uh, that I can see of for the last few days was trying to make this market look good so it would absorb uh, the uh, money coming in. The deal was going to be about $200 million. They may have uh, downplayed that. Uh, so it's not a big deal for a rather large company. Uh, but it's not uncommon for them to go, wow, look, we sold $250 million. The demand was so high. And they probably actually uh, were hoping for $300 million and got $250 uh, they downplayed a great deal of this to make sure it looks good. And uh, my guess, if there's any ETF that they're going to, or I mean, if there's any uh, IPO they're going to try to paint the tape with over the next few weeks, it's certainly going to be bats uh, as they try to push out more IPOs if these, this one holds. So we'll uh, keep an eye on that. Anyway, uh, looking at IBB, just another day out here. But man, I would like to see uh, back into that 290 range on the IBB. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, my tests or my movers? We're going to go to the movers out here and get to them. Um, uh, what else do we have? I think I had some other questions out here. Uh, Polar, what is your take on AG? Hit new highs, looking for a good top. Okay. Let's take a quick look. AG. Um... I'm hoping you're not talking about agriculture and you are talking about first majestic silver. Um, you know, higher high out here so far, uh, the volume out here. Um, let's try and, 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 and da, 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 da. Let's see if there's anything else we'll see. Okay. Um, man, this is a move and a continuous move higher on this. Um, you really just need to look for any close back below the nine day moving average on this. As long as it stays above it, um, the trend is intact. We will be back in a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, don't miss out on the Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from EverBank. This is the second running of their popular five year US dollar denominated CD, which gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. 
And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this indexed CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The May 19th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member. FDIC. John Logan has just announced that he is hosting a workshop Wednesday, April 20th for all TAS Profile Scanner Plus subscribers, opportunities in the current market, and strategies to profit. In this hour-long workshop, John Logan will use the TAS Profile Scanner Plus to give you a current breakdown of the sectors in the market and the opportunities that are present, as well as providing subscribers with the best strategies to trade with to profit when using this powerful piece of market scanning software. Right now, you can sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner Plus at the front page of TFNN.com. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is such an amazing piece of software that we're even offering a no-questions-asked money-back guarantee for all new paying subscribers. Don't delay as John Logan's subscriber event is coming up soon. Sign up now for the TAS Profile Scanner Plus and be up and running within minutes using this powerful piece of market scanning software. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, we got uh, an email. I uh, like you uh, see. I'm short the Dow. Should I cover or hold the, over the weekend? And the question is, where are you short at? Um, but uh, you know, normally I tell people uh, follow whatever plan you had when you entered the trade, and don't try to uh, second guess your plan. Uh, my guess, though, is uh, if you, I was flat or fairly flat, uh, wherever you were short, I'd probably just cover it, not take the risk over the weekend. Um, you know, normally you get some uh, out of bandwidth moves on the Monday and Tuesday as options roll over. I tend to, uh, if I was going to day trade, those are the days that always seem to uh, uh, be the most volatile every single month, the two days after the Friday expiration. So uh, always, uh, uh, st uh, almost by twice. So you can uh, normally look over the years as seeing that those are good days to day trade, but probably pretty poor days uh, to probably have longer term trades that you hang on to. So, you know, if you could get it all cash, I would just be all cash and get ready to react on uh, probably Wednesday or maybe catch a big swing on either Monday or Tuesday that would help you in your longer term trade. Uh, of other stocks out here, you can uh, also email me at path at tfnn.com like Dave did. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've got some stocks that are moving out here, not a whole lot. Uh, to, 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 what do we have? Repsilla um, is a biotech. It's off 15-17%. Uh, uh, but again, uh, if I got a move like this did on the 7th, uh, you never, I almost always uh, sell into it. Um, and the reason why is that uh, I want to see somewhere between 150 or maybe 200%, 250% of the volume of the previous days before a stock moved to think that there's going to be additional move in it. If we get all this volume at one time, it tends to be an exhaustion move. And you come back down here and uh, as today, volume even increasing a little bit. Um, so that is one. Uh, to, to, we talked yesterday, and I said earlier in the show, I had a, I informed you thusly. I informed you thusly. Yes, thank you, Leonard. Uh, DDD uh, was off, uh, what is there, what is it, off, uh, to, to, off about 5%. Actually kind of an ugly looking candle out here, because it does set up not a perfect, but a sort of uh, abandoned baby, a shooting star, uh, one of those uh, topping patterns, I thought this thing was going to probably come back into the 12 buck range. And that is because uh, the last few days going into this, uh, there was just a lot of uh, shorting. And it looked to me uh, as if uh, this was probably more of a one-day stunt uh, to run a bunch of shorts out of the market. 
and uh, sell into it by some of the street names as one of the games out here. But my guess is this comes back into the trading range uh, next week. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, you want to, to be safe in this thing. You probably want that $12 range. Other stocks of interest out here. What do we have? Uh, Under Armour is off. Eh, it's off a percent. Not that big a deal. Take a quick look at that. See if there's anything uh, else uh, other than that. Um, I mean, uh, eh, I don't think there's anything really to say about that. Uh, not much since this thing split. Do, 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 Depot Med. Let's uh, look on the positive side at here. Uh, Great Basin Scientific up 78% on a buyout. Uh, AFCO is American Farmlands, and uh, they look like they're going to be selling out. Uh, this is up about 10% today. Um, and I don't know if you can say anything else. Of course, uh, a lot of these companies are selling off to Chinese, and uh, why they do not have a buyer, they are using that well-worn phrase, looking for strategic opportunities, i.e. Um, uh, selling out. Uh, another one up 6% is Auto Home. Uh, this did get into these gaps, these smaller gaps from the way down. And there wasn't a lot of volume, so they're not going to act like a whole lot of resistance. Um, this did pop up today. It did on significant volume. I dislike that a lot of these stocks haven't tested their previous lows out here. Uh, but uh, normally, you're going to fill these big gap downs that had some energy to them. Uh, in this case, it's the 4th of January, uh, where this thing looks like it would top out, which is just a hair under 34 bucks, and going back to this gap down of the 1st of, G oh, no, excuse me, the 4th of January with a million shares. Um, 2.4 million shares today, and we're into that candle. So I, I imagine this one could go another couple of bucks for auto home. <laughs> Infosys. Another one out here. Let's take a quick look at this guy. Uh, INFY. You're looking for the symbol up 7.5% uh, on this. It is an ADR. Uh, and significantly uh, above its previous April 4th high that had 5.4 million shares at 1949. Uh, we looks like we're going to close above it. I would have liked to have seen this thing hold. A little bit more of its bounce out here to $20.47. Uh, but you certainly had the kind of volume you're looking for twice uh, the previous high of April 4th and today already uh, closing 12 million shares. Uh, I want to check back in in JetBlue a little bit. Uh, we talked about how these uh, stocks uh, were starting to do a little bit better on Wednesday. And as a follow-up, um, not bad out here. This one won't actually was one of the weaker ones. Uh, it did go through its previous low of March 10th that had 13 million shares and never got more than really uh, about 7 million shares, 6.9, it's absolute low. So it's back into the trading range. Uh, but again, you haven't had a real sign of strength in these airline companies. Uh, maybe we see a little bit more of that love come in if oil continues to pull back on Monday. What else do we have? Uh, Transocean, uh, trans uh, i.e. number rig, is up 5% uh, from the uh, lows of today. Uh, I don't know if you can make a great deal about this, uh, but uh, it at least has come off its lows. Um, you really have to think that these are coming back into their absolute low of February 24th uh, for rig. This had $7.67 with 22 million shares. You got back almost into that candle on April 7th with 53 million shares. Man, it's just, uh, you don't, uh, what is the, uh, where was that all that volume? 53 million shares on the 30th. And it kind of went a little slower, but it never went and tested that February 24th low. So that will be hanging out there. And uh, my guess is that we will see that tested before we truly go higher and just have a, uh, momentary bounce in the markets. The uh, Auto Home McManus Dynergy uh, up about 5%. The DNY, find that in my list. DNY. Uh, to, to, to. And this one's just a continuation of its trend. 
And I bet if we put this on this, the saying has closed above its nine-day moving average since the 25th of February uh, and still above it. So the trend is intact. You need a close below, a close back above, and then a close below before these things signal they're going lower. We'll be back in a minute. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com or put a message in the den. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're off three points on the S&P cash. Not much happening out here. 2.5 billion shares, so it'll be a low a volume day probably by unless something happens in the last 30 minutes look for about 3.2 billion shares on the day and uh i think we had uh 4.2 the other day so a little less of course it is a friday i'm wondering how close we are getting to lighter of volumes for the summer uh, but uh, probably still another 15 days away so probably can't blame that on the lighter volume for today this the lack of movement on expiration day. Uh, as we said, uh, Dynagy is still on those tops. Uh, you need these things to at least give some kind of uh, look at here that says that uh, they are weaker. Uh, to do what else do we have out here? Uh, Micron is up a little, but it's not out of its trading range. I was looking yet for a possible move to 12 bucks on expiration, and uh, man, it came down on some volume the other day and. 
uh, kind of lost its groove. Uh, China Net Wrangle Resources Vivint Solar. Uh, this is up 2%. Uh, Newmont, oh, of course, all the gold stocks out here are the ones moving. Let's see if there's anything else I want to look at. Uh, ESV in the last segment here. Uh, to, to check my email too. Uh, and we have one more question to answer before the end of the day. Inesco ESV gapping down with a huge amount of volume today. Uh, 73, 73 and a half million shares so far uh, on that. And uh, man, you're going into 7.1 million shares on April 7th. Uh, and that high volume low uh, still exists with 15 million shares from February 25th. So a few of these here. I'm trying to remember exactly what this company does. I think they're financial, aren't they? Uh, offshore contract drilling services. Okay, to the oil and gas industry worldwide. It operates through three segments, floaters, jackups, and others. Uh, company owns and operates an offshore drilling rig fleet of 68 rigs, of which probably a bunch of them are unused at the moment, uh, and four rigs under construction. Ugh. Well, that's not very good. Uh, down on heavy volume today. So what else do we have? Oh, question on Tesla out here. Um, what's going on with Tesla? Um, it's starting to kind of pull back. One thing I dislike is this is the every day I do a scan to look at, at what are the most highly shorted stocks. And every day Tesla is on it, which I hate. Um, I really want to see this thing go back up one more time. And the shorts not dive all over this thing. My guess is that you could see a gap up on Tesla. Uh, it, uh, I still think it's a $40 stock long term. Uh, the question is going to be getting it right and getting the entry right with all these people continually piling on the shorts. And uh, my guess is you still have a little bit while to go and to watch that. Um, let's take a quick look here. Uh, on the short side of this. Um, hopefully you can all see this at home, um, but uh, the red part of the volume bar out here is the actual short activity for that day. Didn't mean those folks went home. It did, does mean that that was a short sell, though. You had a lot of uh, shorting going in on the first, uh, and it has actually kind of continued. Probably the best part is the last couple of days uh, where shorting has been very minor and a little bit less. Um, my guess, though, is that you want to see that 269 at least retested one more time and don't see people piling in on this one more time. Anyway, have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell a friend over the weekend. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. TFNN has just announced a new Tiger Dollar sale that will run through this coming Monday only. It's tax day on April 18th, and what better time to lock in extra savings on any TFNN good or service with the purchase of Tiger Dollars. From now through April 18th only, we've doubled the bonuses that normally come with any Tiger Dollar purchase. Instead of a 10 to 20% bonus, we've doubled each number and you can now get a 20, 30, or 40% bonus on whatever you spend. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN good or service. Once you purchase your Tiger Dollars and receive your 20 to 40% bonus on whatever you spend, you can then apply them to your subscriptions going forward as well as any course, workshop, or or service that we offer at TFNN. Don't forget that tax day falls on April 18th this year, and now is the perfect time to get your Tiger Dollars. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollar bonus today, visit the front page of TFNN.com now. You're watching Tiger TV.